Washoe County Library System welcomes you to our monthly series from the Nevada Historical Society presents High Noon with Neil Cobb. This afternoon's topic is about where to hear about Nevada history presented by Carol Coleman. My name is Samantha and I'm so happy to be here with you today. And now I'd like to introduce Sherry Hazorn with the Nevada Historical Society. Again, welcome and thank you. Thank you, Samantha, and thank you for the library as always to helping us host these programs and getting them out to a wider audience, and we so appreciate this partnership. Um, so uh, I'm Sherry, and I am the Curator of History here at the Nevada Historical Society, and today I want to introduce, as always, our host, Neil Cobb, who has been a longtime supporter for the Nevada Historical Society, and we so appreciate his commitment to try to help us do great programming and, and really focus on people with different expertise and passion with state history and just wanting to get involved in, in their communities. So without further ado, let me introduce Neil Cobb. Hi, Neil. Hi, Sherry. Thank you very much. I wanted to talk just a little bit about Carol and newcomers to the area. Some people are here for different reasons, maybe to beat the California taxes or whatever, but there's other folks that moved here because they wanted to. And these are a are, are different group. They really are. And Sam and his uh, beautiful wife, Carol, they really dig into the respect. You want to know more about the place you want to call home. And they have overdone it. They really have. They have got involved with so many different things. They love the state and they have benefited uh, themselves personally. And they have become Nevada treasures. So Carol Coleman retired from uh, <laughs> to Reno in 1999 after a career in the computer field. After joining newcomers and the HARPS organization, that's an acronym for Historic Reno Preservation Society, she became a docent at the Nevada Historical Society. In 2010, she wrote Early Reno, one of the better Arcadia books. Uh, and she also uh, was the, um, served as editor for the newcomers, uh, the uh, Docents Council newsletter, the Harps Footprints. Uh, and uh, over the years, she became president of the newcomers, the historical uh, Docent Council, and of course, Harps does other programs like Learn About Nevada. She has been a major player with us on this program. High noon, uh, we have spent many an hour straightening out not just my PowerPoints, but other people where we had to build them from scratch. And she has just been a, a, a major plus. And I cannot uh, tell you uh, any stronger, she is a Nevada treasure. So please welcome our speaker today, Carol Coleman. Thank you, Neil. I appreciate that intro. When Neil asked me to do this talk, I asked him, what did he want me to talk about? He said, well, look at all the things you've done. Talk about that. Well, we're going to talk about how you hear about Nevada history, because that's what I do all the time. So I'm going to talk about places, organizations, and books. And I'm going to give you a list at the end with names, phone numbers, websites, all the information you need. How did I gather this information? Well, first I joined newcomers. In newcomers, I got into the Learn About Nevada group. Very soon I was the chair. So I needed to find places and people to learn about Nevada history. And then that summer of 2000, I read in the Reno Gazette Journal that there was gonna be a walking tour of, of East 4th Street. So I went on that. It was run by Historic Reno Preservation Society, and I joined. And then I thought, I need more information to do this Learn About Nevada group. So I went to the Nevada Historical Society, became a docent, and took docent training. In those years, training was 11 weeks, 
Monday afternoons. Great speakers, lots of information. Today, unfortunately, it's a half day tour, but that's where I started gathering information. The rest of the information that I'm going to present today, I found on the internet. Google is wonderful. First off, let's try Virginia City. Note that Virginia City is open from May to October. There are things happening the rest of the year, but tours don't happen. Some sites are not open. Remember, it's snowing up there a lot. So Virginia City has events. It also has a lot of museums. I'm going to mention four, but Virginia City has 17 museums. So I'm going to start with the Fourth Ward School Museum. Fourth Ward School was built in 1876 during a time when there was a real shortage of schools for that area. Comstock at that point was the biggest city in Nevada. There were a lot of people living there. Fourth Ward School was built to house a thousand students. It's a four-story building and it operated as a school until 1936. Off and on, there were efforts to make it a museum, but the real work began in the 1990s, and it's a wonderful museum to go to. Every room has things for you to learn about the city and the history of Nevada. St. Mary's of the Mountain Church, it's a Catholic church, is just gorgeous. A trip inside is wonderful, and maybe you'll find someone to tell you stories about the museum and maybe its restoration might learn about the intern bishop who was there for one summer who took down the balcony. The balcony has now been restored. There are stories to be heard. If you come out of the museum on the front, go around on the right side, there's a basement has a museum of its own. Find someone in there who can tell you tales of Nevada, of Bishop Manogue, and of the church, also of the Great Fire of 1875. Another stop is Piper's Opera House. This opened during the Comstock, it's gone through lots of changes. In 1920, it was condemned, it was opened again about 1940, off and on in the late 1990s. Great deal of restoration, and it's open now, especially during May to October. Uh, if you stop in in the afternoon, usually you can go in the upper area and see the stage. And there are wonderful performances there. It was built for great sound and today still has that. Another building in Virginia City that's a wonder to go to off a little bit is St. Mary's Arts Center. It opened as Marie Louise Hospital back about 1875, technically very advanced. Every room had hot and cold running water. It closed as a hospital in 1940 in the 1980s become St. Mary's Art Center. They give classes and workshops. You can have a tour of the place. You can also rent rooms for meetings and such. Great place to stop by. I would suggest that your first stop when you get to Virginia City is to go on the trolley. It's across the street from the Bucket of Blood Saloon. It operates, of course, May through October. But the trolley driver will be narrating. They'll tell you about all these places I've suggested and more. It will drive north on C Street to the cemeteries, back on D Street, all the way south to the corner where the Fourth Ward School is, and then back to the parking lot. It's really worth the tour, so you have a good idea of where things are that you might want to see. And another suggestion you might take the VNT from Mound House, also known as Eastgate, to Virginia City. You actually might encounter a robbery while you're on your way on this trip. Uh, the last time I did this, we probably got up to Virginia City about 1030, and we had three hours before we took the train back. Another way to do it is to have some of you go on the VNT and some of you drive up. So it's a one-way trip, and then you have more time. Another place to go is down in Minden. It's Dangberg Home Ranch. It was at one of the earliest ranches in Douglas County, and one of the biggest at the time. Dangbergs have lived in that house 
up until 1988 when the last ant passed away. It's now a five acre Douglas County Park and it's run by a nonprofit. Call and make arrangements for tour for yourself or a group. Also keep track of the events that happen down there. This summer, there are going to be a lot of Chautauqua performances, music performances. Uh, so check it out on the website. Bowers Mansion in Washoe Valley is a place you ought to go. It's also a May to October schedule. The Bowers, Eileen and Sandy, were both millionaires from Comstock, from their own claims. They married and spent their fortune on building this house and filling it with wondrous items. When Sandy died, they were close to broke. And shortly after, Eileen was in San Francisco living on the streets and she died. Various people took it over after that. But in the 1940s, a women's group from Reno managed to put together enough money to buy it. It's now a Washoe County Park and wonderful tours of the mansion. In the summer, there are events, Bowers Mansion on the porch. Uh, you can see here there's a presentation going on. I haven't taken people on this trip, but this trip I've been on a number of times. I suggest you get the brochure about the Lincoln Highway. It's a great brochure and it's a five fold with maps and all the places you can visit on the Lincoln Highway. One of them might be Sand Mountain. It's just outside Fallon. You can tell how tall it is by the perspective of the motorcycle at the base of the mountain. It's a ever moving mountain because of the winds and it's a great hike. Uh, my husband took it, took him about an hour and 15 minutes with the hot sands and two steps up and one back. I have a picture of him at the top. It was like a little dot at the top of the mountain and it took him about five minutes to come back down. That's a great place to stop. Right in front of it is one of the Pony Express stops. I do suggest you take a look at those. There's several along the Lincoln Highway, typically maybe three feet high of stones. There was no wood. There were no trees out there. People occupied that three or four foot enclosure, no roof, and there'd be a similar enclosure for horses. It's really interesting to follow the Pony Express stops. Another place would be Stokes Castle, just outside of Austin. That was built 1896-97 by a railroad magnet. It's not open to go in. You can walk around it. In this picture, those iron spokes that are sticking out held balconies. You could probably look out over the Reese River Valley from each of them. So another place to go is to go onto Eureka and enjoy their theater. Do try Highway 50 sometime, very interesting. How about a stop in Tonopah, maybe on your way to Las Vegas? Tonopah became famous in the 1900s, 1905, because big gold and silver boom. Reno at the time was in a bust era when the cum stock ceased to be productive. Reno was the banking town and there were railroads now down to Tonopah. So the Tonopah boom became a boom for Reno also. Wonderful museum, Central Nevada Museum. It'll tell you about Tonopah and Goldfield, uh, but it also tells you about World War II. There was a big military emphasis there. Pilots were being trained around Tonopah. You can also visit the refurbished Mitzpah Hotel built during the boom era. Stop at Genoa. They have a wonderful courthouse museum. Candy Dance happens there last weekend in September, and you can go to Mormon Station. If you go to the courthouse museum and go through the various rooms to see what was happening there, I think that was a school and then a courthouse and now a museum. Across the street from that is Mormon Station, replica of where the Mormons lived during the time they were there in the 1850s. 
And also try to find out about Snowshoe Thompson, who was there during the Comstock and carried mail from Placerville all the way to Genoa day after day on those very long snowshoes. Across the street from Mormon Station, Caddy Corner, is the Genoa Bar. I've never managed to get in, but you can peek in the windows. And on the other corner, there are places where you can get food. Always important. Another stop could be in Fallon at the Churchill County Museum. It's a great museum, well supported by the town. It has both temporary and permanent exhibits. It has a building that houses antique vehicles, which I'm always interested in. They now have a children's area with a 1950s kitchen. Remember those. <laughs> If you're interested in Hidden Cave, the way to get there is by going to the Churchill County Museum. They'll take you out on a tour to Hidden Cave, which is an archaeological dig east of town. When you're at Hidden Cave, you might stop at Grimes Point, one of the largest of the petroglyph sites for the rock art panels in the Fallon area. Back in Carson City, stop at the Nevada State Railroad Museum. It has locomotives and cars of the VNT on site and some to ride. It also has McKean motor cars there, beautifully repaired and painted. And the 1401 car is there. Check to see what events are happening because you may be able to get there when a locomotive is going to move down their one mile rail line. It's fun to, to do that. Inside the building, there are exhibits like this one on the left bottom of the completion of the Central Pacific, where the work from Sacramento East met the work from Omaha West and the Golden Spike was placed. So you might stop at the Nevada State Museum in Carson City. The big building on the left is part of the museum, and it is the original Mint building. The Mint ran there from 1870 to 1893. And on Saturdays at the museum now, they do a coin press demonstration. That's always interesting to see. In the basement of that building, they have a mine exhibit, maybe a little claustrophobic when you go in there. Alongside the walkways are dioramas showing things that went on in the mines, both equipment, how they set it up to dynamite, great section of the museum. Upstairs, there are exhibits like this one of this antique vehicle. And remember, second Saturday is Family Fun Day. Part of the State Museum, but in a separate building, is the Marjorie Russell Textile Museum. This you have to make arrangements to go on this tour and you can ask the curator, Jan Lovren, what type of thing you would like to see or are you interested in first ladies inaugural ball gowns? Are you interested in quilts, early undergarments, <laughs> which I think is a great exhibit. I just can't imagine how people did things in the day you wore hoops and corsets and uh, Life is easier today. Another stop would be the Foreman Roberts House Museum in Carson City. It was moved to Carson City in 1873, supposedly from Virginia City. It's operated now by the Carson City Historical Society. It's going to be open Sunday afternoons and by appointment. There was a terrible fire there in 2016 the Historical Society has gotten funds and restored it and opened again in 2021. There are exhibits and there are monthly talks that happen there. Back in Reno, you should know about Bartley Ranch. It's now a county park, but it was an early Truckee Meadows ranch. It's a 56-acre site. You'll find an interpretive center. There's the Hawkins Outdoor Amphitheater. Huffaker School was moved there, and it's open for events. The Little Barns, part of Turkey Meadows Remembered, is on site. 
they're not open unless there's an event. But when they're open, they're full of antiques and collectibles, and you can have a tour of that. On site, there are hiking trails. There's a riding area and picnic areas. Watch for Evening on the Ranch in July. You can find that on Art Town. Those will be musical performances, talks. And in the winter, watch for Come In from the Cold. That usually is on a, a Saturday. Maybe it will run for eight weeks with different musical programs each Saturday. Make sure to visit the Lake Mansion in Reno. It was built in 1877 and Myron Lake bought it in 1879. He's known as the founder of Reno. Its story is that he never lived in it, but his ex-wife lived in it. The mansion has been moved twice. Originally built on California and South Virginia Street, it was moved in 1971 out to the convention center, a four-mile trip. And then it was moved again in 2004 to Court Street in Arlington, just a couple blocks away from its original location. It's open for tours during Art Town. It's available for tours by appointment. There's a building that you can use for events, weddings in the mansion. Check it out on their website. Be sure to visit the National Automobile Museum in Reno. After Bill Hara died and the Holiday Inn bought his casinos and his 1,400-count automobile collection, Holiday donated 175 of the vehicles to a proposed auto museum in Reno. It's a nonprofit, and there are events that happen there. As you can see on the left, autos are staged here as part of an event. And on the right, there's the Thomas Flyer. It's the original 1907 auto that won the 1908 New York to Paris race. It's a great vehicle to go see. You can go on a guided tour or there are self-guided tours. It's a must. Idlewild Park was built in 1927 for the Transcontinental Highways Exposition held in Reno to celebrate the completion of the Lincoln and Victory Highways. Those now would be known as Highway 40 and Highway 50. It was the first time you could go in an auto from California to New York. It's actually a 49-acre park. There's rose gardens, there are pools, I think there's a swimming pool. But what I wanted to tell you about was the California building. It was built by the state of California to celebrate the completion of the road. And it's the only architectural element of the exposition still remaining. Many states put up tented exhibitions. The state of Nevada put their building on South Virginia at Mill Street. And it was there until 1967 when the Pioneer was built there. Be sure to visit the Keck Museum on the UNR campus. It's actually in the UNR Historic District, established in 1987. There are 13 buildings that are in that historic district, Morrill Hall being one of them. And it's opposite this building, the Mackey School. School of Mines, built in 1908 with a statue of John Mackey out front. You might try to get to the Mineral Monday tour held by curator Garrett Barmore. Make a stop at the Sparks Heritage Museum. It opened in 1985 as a nonprofit. The building on the left was once Hale's Drug Store. And the building on the right, it was the Justice Court of Barks. It was once a library, it was built about 1932 and designed by Frederick de Longchamps. And you'll get to see Last Chance Joe. It's a 35 foot statue that's now in front of what was the Hales Drugstore, been restored by the museum. It spent its life from 1954 on in front of the nugget until new ownership decided they didn't need it. Here's another part of the Sparks Museum, the railroad exhibit. You have the Chinese Memorial, 
you have the railroad exhibit, and you have the Glendale Schoolhouse. They're all part of the museum's events, and all of these are free. I encourage you to join the museum and take part in its events and its speaker presentations. Make a stop at the Nevada Historical Society. It's the oldest cultural institution in the state began in 1904 with Jean Weir as its director until her death until 1950. It's located on the UNR campus. It has a museum. It has a research library. You can have docent-led tours. These are some of the exhibits that you would see. And there you see me giving a tour of the Reno room. Take a chance to see the collections of photographs and manuscripts that are there. And once again, I encourage you to be a member of the Nevada Historical Society, maybe become a docent. And then there's Historic Reno Preservation Society. We call ourselves HARPS. I'm going to toot my own horn here because I'm the president of this organization. It formed 25 years ago because it was concerned about the possible demolition of the Mates Hotel, which, as you can see, was demolished on Super Bowl Sunday, 2000. Also concerned about the Virginia Street Bridge, which at the time they were talking about demolishing it, well, it was replaced in 2015. But the bridge now has some of the decorative items of the Virginia Street Bridge, and it has the architecture of the 1870 Iron Bridge. Harps does walking tours. It's been walking tours since its beginning. And here you see on the left, this would be part of the Newlands neighborhood tour. On the right would be part of the Parson Mills tour. On the left bottom would be part of the El Reno tour. Those El Reno apartments were moved all over town. And on the bottom right, Louis Basque would be part of the East 4th Street tour. So all of these will be part of this summer's tours. We'll be giving them in June and July of 2022 and we'll be offering 17 walking tours uh, this summer. HARPS also does speaker programs. We have videos on our website of previous speaker programs. On the left would be the Lear Theater program by Dr. Alicia Barber. And that was the theater, the architecture, the history. The building was designed by Paul River Williams, the covenants on the Lear. In the center, this would be an early Reno program. The image is of a lumber camp run during the Comstock while they were clear cutting all of the forests of the Sierra. And this Galena lumber camp would be about 1863. The town of Galena itself burned in 1867 and was never rebuilt. And on the right, you have the speaker at Burning Man. She talked about the archaeology of Burning Man. Very interesting presentation. We will have speaker programs in the downtown library from September to November 2022 and January to April 2023. In 2010, Harps began home tours. This is a tour through a home with docents giving you information about the home and its history. In 2010, and again in 2019, we had a tour with the Pearl Upson House. Uh, it's a brick Queen Anne style. 2011, we went to West of Wells neighborhood and we showed a Spanish style house. I'm showing you one home of those that were on the tour. And in 2012, we did a Tudor revival. It was designed by Frederick de Longchamps in 1927. This home is in the Newlands Historic District, which is on the National Register of Historic Homes since 2017. Several of the homes that we'll show you are in that National District. 
In 2013, we did this house on the top left. It's a Queen Anne. It was owned by the Can family for a century. In 2014, we did Greystone Castle. It's a 1930 stone Cotswold cottage. In 2015, we did, we're in West of Wales again, and we did this shingle style Victorian. And in 2016, the Collin House on Mayberry. It was built in Virginia City in 1851 and moved to this site in 1901. See, in 2017, we featured this colonial revival with French influences. It was designed by Frederick Jalonchamps in 1927. It faces the Washoe County Golf Course. And in 2018, we did this Tudor revival with a cute little round tower that you could barely see behind that tree. And in 2019, we featured this Spanish style casa. We're planning on hosting a home tour on September 24th, 2022, if all holds well with COVID. Publications of note that Harps puts together the publication footprints began with probably a three page black and white mailer, and it's now a 16 page full color quarterly with well researched content. On the right is our newest email monthly newsletter, begun about 18 months ago, and it's a newsie full of content about events and programs of interest. In 2019, Reno Historical came to Harps. We support it with maintenance and license fees. The editor of Reno Historical is Dr. Alicia Barber. Reno Historical now has over 220 articles and 20 tours. It's a website and a phone app. On the right, I show you what you might see on the phone app. I encourage people to use their smartphones and click on certain areas to find out about the building they're standing in, in Reno. Books I'd suggest, well, I really like the early Reno book published by Arcadia, possibly because I wrote it back in 2010. It has history of Reno and its buildings, the railroads, how people got to Nevada, the divorce industry. It's very easy to read. Probably you could read it in a two, three hour span. Then I'd suggest Reno's Big Gamble, a bit more academic, a lot more information. Great book by Alicia Barber. And to complete your tour of this area, get the book on Washoe County that Joyce Cox wrote. It's like the outer part of the donut and the early Reno book is the inner part of the donut. Other books I'd suggest be sure to pick up one of Stan Payer's Nevada Ghost Towns and Mining Camps. Great pictures, great maps, great history of Nevada in general. And then if you lived here in the early 2000s, and I'm thinking about 2006, and you got the Reno Gazette, every day you had a story about the Donner Party. It was the 150th anniversary of that party, and it's crossing from Omaha to California. Then a book was written, compilation of those stories and pictures, and it's well worth your picking up. It represents what the Donner Party went through, but it also represents what every wagon train went through on their way through Nevada, 40 mile desert. Great book. And written recently is the Arcadia book on Sparks by Joyce Cox, and it certainly completes your adventure in this Washoe County area. Oh, well, we've come to the end of our slides that I prepared for you, but I do encourage you now to go out and see those places I've suggested. Contact those organizations, see what events they have, and get one of those books and learn more about Nevada history. And most of all, I want to encourage you to enjoy Nevada. Thank you. Carol, that was really great. I enjoyed that. It was a nice selection um, covering the museums and organizations 
as well as, um, you know, what people could do in, in books too. Yeah. So, well, I apologize for the, those that I left out. I know there are many more. Oh, absolutely. But I think that's a great way to get people started mm -hmm. and that if they're interested, they could look at the historic society's bookstore, Sundance and be able to find more books yeah, to, to quench their thirst to learn more about the state. So um, uh, let's see, I do have a question here for you. Um, the Roberts House, you mentioned it, it been moved from Virginia City. Is there any more information about this lovely little yellow house? Uh, it, yes, if you check on the website, both uh, the Foreman Roberts Museum or and uh, Carson City Historical Society have quite a bit on it. Uh, I didn't include in the text part that it was moved from Virginia City because apparently there are discussions of where where that came from. Definitely moved to that site though. Right, and I thought I'd heard at least it'd been from maybe Washoe. Yes. Valley and it and for sure. And then it went through the little canyon, you know, where the train tracks yeah. were yeah. Um, that, you know, got burnt several years ago from the, yeah. the fire. Uh, to have it moved as early, I think, what was it, 1873? Mm -hmm. uh, actually, Virginia City was still operating then. It was, yeah. it was 20 years later that buildings were being used for firewood or being moved. Absolutely, you know, like the Fulton House and, and, and yeah. others as well were being moved mm -hmm. down. Um, but also, um, yeah, at the time, you know, Washoe County or the Washoe City was, you know, yeah. abandoned. So yes. I know there's yeah. there's questions yeah. whether- it that, Yeah, that or... was 1873, what, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. About the yeah. time that Reno became the county seat yeah. instead of Washoe City. Yeah, yeah. good point. Yeah. Um, oh, uh, you had mentioned about, um, you know, the train ride going from Carson up to yes. uh, Virginia City. Uh, there was a mention that July 1st through 4th, there's a Carson train museum is offering ticketed events, uh, many trains from other museums. Oh, it's kind of that steam up or yes. that special yeah. event, yeah. I think. And you need to get tickets for that. And I think it's going to be, you know, sell out pretty quickly because yeah. anybody that's a train enthusiast yeah. is definitely going to want to see it because they're going to have a lot of different vehicles. So, uh -huh. uh, well, let's see. Oh, uh, did you mention the Stewart Indian School? I didn't. I didn't. <laughs> there, I just saw that note but, here. But I have to, I have to say, I also didn't mention Ollie, which does historical talks. That's true. Places I mentioned are places I've been. Oh, I have, okay. I, I've not been to Stewart Indian School. Shame on me. Uh, and although I know about that, I'm an Ollie member. I know about the history talks. I have mm -hmm. to say I haven't been to one. Okay. Okay. No, it was wonderful. Um, they were mentioning that they have their annual powwow that happens June 18th and 19th. And I've heard people talk about it. It's a yeah, wonderful I know event. people who have gone that say mm -hmm. it's a real it's a real must. Yeah, for sure. I know that's on my list. <laughs> um, oh, uh, well, you can answer it or so can I. Um, I heard that at one point NHS was going to move off the UNR campus. <laughs> Can you mention if that's true? Well, we were planning on moving and we were looking at the Nelson building where Ollie used to be and the Reno News, um, the RGJ had been for many years. But due to COVID, like many things, yeah. um, the the event, uh, the move, uh, we had to cancel that. And so yeah. we're still on the UNR campus. And, but I know um, Dr. McGee is definitely still looking and hoping at some point we might be able to get downtown um, museum presence or, you know, a larger facility for the collections growth, um, galleries, programming, all of that. But, um, but for now, yeah, and also for parking. 
Yes, yes. And that was one big uh, a positive draw that we were looking at the Nelson building was be the parking and a theater, but at the moment, no. So, yeah. so but that's okay. <laughs> we have a 99 year lease with the university. So they're growing what, all around. 47 years to go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> was there anything else you wanted to talk about, Carol? You really covered a great variety um, of of things and and there was a mention thanking you carol for the great presentation and 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 well i was I pleased to do on. it i i encourage people to join th join become members become volunteers i think volunteering is how you learn about yeah about the place yeah for sure i yeah. see me yeah. with a finger up in the air <laughs> <laughs> Carol has brought many, many programs to the newcomers. I wondered if you'd comment on the response from your audiences. I don't quite understand the question. I want to know if they if it was a good, bad, and different by people that, that are new to the area when they witnessed one of the programs that we've brought to them. Oh, there. oh, I see. Yeah. Oh. Uh, absolutely, um, especially during COVID, but prior to know about places, uh, lots, of, lots of people aren't willing to go out on their own, but if you're willing to take them there, uh, that's also a positive. And I've been doing uh, Learn About Nevada programs <laughs> while well, I've been doing them since. Neil, do you, do you remember the very first Newcomers Learn About Nevada program I did, I think in 2001, we were at the Glory Hole and you were the presenter. And I had a wonderful experience after that from one of your oh, uh, people funny. in the audience. Uh, he talked to me afterwards and he said, Mr. Cobb, he says, that, I knew that was going to be good because I knew your dad. I said, you did? I said, this is supposed to be newcomers. He says, yeah. He says, my neighbor's a newcomer. And I conned him into taking me along to see the program because I love all of this stuff. He said, but you know, you made one little error. I said, well, what was that? I said, when you showed Lee's drive-in and you talked about it being placed advantageously uh, to take a full uh, advantage of the tourist traffic coming through. I said, yeah. He says, well, you'll have to remember the town was, and he got as far as SE, and I said, I knew I was wrong, seasonal. He said, we have to stay open in those restaurant businesses all year long. So it was designed so it would accommodate the local, the bread and butter to keep us alive. He says, oh, by the way, he said, my name's Hudson Lee. I built the place. <laughs> Boom. Yeah, I mean, it, this research yeah. comes around in strange ways sometimes. Yeah, but it's absolutely. Fun yeah. yeah. Well, I see Lorraine is asking about the glory hole, and Neil can probably do it better than I can, but it, it was opposite what is now Johnny's Ristorante on for, uh, West 4th Street. And it, it became almost immediately after we were there, it became another restaurant. Yeah, the Washoe Club stuff. It well, started okay. off as the Villa Roma. And, uh, okay. Way, way back on there. Yeah, and and I and think it, it may now be a wine place. Yeah, Whispering Vines. Whispering Vines. Whispering, but yeah. It's had many names since. Uh, a lot yeah. of those down 4th Street, that's really interesting. When you have uh, the Tombstone uh, Hotel, well, that was originally the L. Ruth. Uh, for Ruth Brown, uh, Reno Brown. And of course, the uh, Circle RB was also named for her. She was named, uh, married to a silent movie star, Lash LaRue, and she had her own uh, movie career. But now that's Mikasa too and the Tombstone Motel. So uh, you know, those buildings have been around for quite some time. Quite a long they, time. They have their own history. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, when you ask about the response to programs, and yeah. uh, I think it was mentioned earlier, 
what the first year we did uh, Zoom programs and recorded them with Art Town. I think that was 2020. We had about 500 hits for I'm going to say 20 videos that we did, uh, unique videos that we did. Mm -hmm. A month later, when I looked, we had over 2,000 hits in the in the following month on those. And I that's the you know that's the value of this recording if if there if there was anything of value during covid it's that we've used zoom to record and edit videos that are available uh whenever people want to look at them so, yes yeah, i i really i feel the same way that it's mm -hmm. it's they're great topics and interesting people and on different mm -hmm. subject matter and 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 yeah people can literally yeah. view it at any time and um and and it's recorded for posterity so. yeah yeah and uh, for people who can't get out of the house you know it's yeah. great to have all of these and it makes yeah. it a lot easier to schedule people as speakers when you That's tell them true. that it's going to be recorded and they can check it out like a book over there at the mm -hmm. well electronically uh, from the library. I don't know yeah. about the historical society if we have that capacity, but those things are available and uh, people like being part of history. You know, they're there forever. Mm -hmm. See, you are today. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, I just hope people get out and yeah. try, try, try some of these things. Read, a, read the book and go. Great show today. Great job. Yeah, and and the app really is. I mean, that's why our organizations were definitely behind um, Reno Historical. That it it helped preserve the history as well, mm -hmm. and that allowed people to get out on their own or with yes. groups to to explore Reno's history yeah. and, and yeah. buildings that are still in existence or were as well yeah. too. And and as you know. When, when I was there at the Historical Society but before COVID, new people would come in all the time. And mm -hmm. I'd say, do you have a smartphone? Let me show you how you can walk around and find buildings, places of interest. Yeah. yeah. Use Reno yeah. Historical. That, yeah, that's why sure. I originally got a smartphone, so I could use Reno Historical on it. <laughs> I found job, it useful bro. for other things, but that was why I absolutely had to have the first smartphone. <laughs> <laughs> well, this has been a great program, and thank you, Carol, as always. As Glad to do it. Supporter for everything, and, you know, so we so appreciate that. So thank you, everybody, for joining today's program. We really appreciate everybody coming and attending, and I will turn it back to Samantha and the library. And thank you, Washoe County Libraries, as always, for helping us sponsor these programs to get them out to the public. So back to you, Samantha. Yes, thank you all for joining us. I'd like to mention that if you do have a Washoe County Library card on our website, we have a, um, a site, it's called Discover and Go, where you can get free and discounted museum passes, such as the National Auto Automobile Museum is on there. I'll put the link in the chat here. Um, and you just use your library card and your PIN number to access those. Thank you, Sherry Hayes-Zorn and Neil Cobb and Carol Pullman with the Nevada Historical Society and John, our Washoe County Library Tech Wizard for making this event possible today. Until next time. Bye. Bye, everybody.